There are many ways of calculating overtime, and in this tutorial, we're going to do examples of two of the more popular methods. Now, keep in mind, I am not an HR expert, so we will not be talking about benefits, taxes, or any of the sort. And because every business is different, you should also consider your company's own policies and any local labor laws when calculating overtime. So, with that disclaimer aside, let's get started on our first example of how you can calculate daily overtime. So let's start by laying out the sheet. So we'll do the employee's name at the top. Then I'm just going to add fields for both the employee's hourly wage and the employee's overtime wage. Let's bold these. And for this example, the overtime wage is going to be one and a half times the regular wage. We'll also need column headers for date, day, start time, end time, break, total hours, convert to number, hourly wage, hourly pay, overtime wage, overtime pay, and total pay. And I want to bold all of these. Let's expand them. And we'll add a little bit of color to them. Do a pale green. So if you're watching this tutorial, you likely have a small business with employees. And if so, you should try the sponsor of this video, Connect Team. So designed specifically for non-desk teams, Connect Team is a super easy to use app that employees can use right on their mobile phones. The app is packed with features that will keep you informed about your employees' work hours, help you avoid timesheet errors, and really give you complete control over your team schedule. You can set up the overtime settings to match your business needs in just a few clicks. So whether you do daily overtime, weekly overtime, include or exclude holidays, etc., with just a few clicks, you'll be set. You can receive alerts about discrepancies such as exceeding any overtime limits, allowing you to quickly approve or deny overtime and PTO requests. You can also incorporate geolocation settings and set limitations so that your employees can only clock in at specific locations. The app will then automatically calculate hours worked, breaks, and overtime. Then, via payroll integrations, managers can export the data to their preferred payroll software or integrate the app with payroll providers like Gusto, Xero, and QuickBooks. So whether you manage a team with different shifts in one location or out on the field, this will be such a time saver for everyone involved. Your team just downloads the app on their smartphone and they're good to go. Plus, if you have 10 users or less, it's free to use. More than 10 users? Well, you can get a 14-day free trial, no credit card needed. And thank you, Connecting, for sponsoring this video and supporting this channel. So the work week in this example is going to be from Monday to Sunday. So we'll write the first date and let's use March the 25th. And I actually want to use the short date format for this. So here in the home tab, in this number drop down, we're going to select short date. And below it, I'm just going to reference this cell and add one. Just going to copy this down. And we'll do this just to cover the week. Now for the day, in this example, I want to see what day of the week this is, so I'm just going to reference the cell next to it, and we'll copy and paste that down. And after we've done that, I'm going to right-click on them, select Format Cells, then select the Custom Category. And here, we're going to create a custom format to display the name of the day of the week. To do this, we'll use four letter Ds, and that's because the letter D is the code to display the day of the week. So we'll click OK, and then now these change to display days. So next, the start time and end time, these should be formatted as time. So I'm going to right click, go to Format Cells, 
in the time category, I want to select the option that says 1.30 p.m. And this option will let any users be able to enter hours that will display the a.m. and p.m. designations. If you're using military time, you can select the one that says 13.30. But for this example, I'm going with the 1.30 p.m. And let's test this to make sure it works. And great, this is exactly how I want those entries to look. So for the break and total hours, I want to display this as total hours, not as time of day. And that's a little bit of a different time format. So with those cells selected, going back to format cells, and this time I want to do a custom time category. There's already some pre-made here for me, so let's see if there's one we can use. So let's use this one with the code to display the hours, colon, and the minutes, and we'll click OK. And so the break, you can also put the break between your start and end times and just have a start break and end break. But for this example, I'm just going to write the quantity of time that the employee was on break for. So the formula that we'll use here to calculate total hours will include the mod function. This function helps with overnight hours because it captures when the time has moved into a new 24 hour cycle. And if you want to learn more about that, I do have another tutorial on calculating overnight hours worked that goes into a little more detail about this. So we'll write mod, open parentheses, open parentheses again, and then we'll select the end time. From that, we'll subtract the start time. We'll close that parentheses, and then the divisor will be one. We'll close that parentheses, and then we subtract the break time. And that person worked eight hours, and it's displaying correctly. Now convert to number. This should display as just a regular number. So with the cell selected, I'm going to apply comma style formatting and then get rid of any decimal spaces. And to convert the total hours to a number, we'll say equals the total hours by 24. And again, I've done another tutorial on converting time to numbers, which will also be linked to here if you want to watch that for more details. Details, and that just shows a regular eight hours. Oh, and these two formulas, we need to copy them down. We'll just drag those down. The hourly wage will reference the employee's hourly wage. So we'll select that and then I'll press the F4 shortcut to lock it. And again, we'll copy this down. And actually, Let's copy this dollar format to all the other cells just using the format painter. And if this isn't formatted for you, just select them and pick currency from the options. So to calculate the hourly wage, we're going to use an if function. And this will say equals if the total hours converted to number is greater than eight, then we want to multiply eight times the hourly wage. Otherwise, if it's eight or less, meaning they didn't go into overtime, we want to multiply the number of hours worked times the wage. So close the parentheses and press enter, and we'll copy this down. Now the overtime wage, like the hourly wage will reference the overtime wage that we have up here for that specific employee. And again, we'll lock it by using the F4 command. And we'll copy this down. Now we're going to use another if function for this daily overtime pay. And that'll be equals if the total hours converted to a number are greater than eight. So if the employee worked their daily overtime, we want to figure out how much overtime so we would do total hours converted to a number minus eight, and this will let us know the amount of overtime that day. And then that amount will multiply times the overtime wage. And if they did not work overtime that day, then of course this number should display a zero. And we'll copy this down. Then finally, to get the total pay, we just combine 
the hourly pay with, with the overtime pay. And we'll copy this down. And then it's a good idea to include some weekly totals, right? Weekly totals. And I'll use the Alt Equal keyboard shortcut to sum. We'll sum the total hours converted to a number, the total hourly pay, the total overtime pay, and total hours. These guys should be currency. And let's bold these. And actually, just for clarity, let's write total hours converted to number to wrap this. And now that we've wrapped this, I want to center these in the cell. Okay, so let's test this by filling in some time. So I'm just going to copy these down. And again, this is going to calculate any daily overtime. So let's create some daily overtime. Let's say they worked till 8 p.m. on Tuesday. On Thursday, they worked until 7 p.m. And great, our formulas are working just as we want them to. Now in the second example, we're going to calculate weekly overtime. So to make this easier, I'm just going to copy this first example and we'll paste it below it but we'll make a few changes of course because we're no longer calculating daily overtime now it's weekly overtime so we can delete the hourly wage hourly pay and overtime wage headers and i also want to delete all the data below it and then here where we had hourly wage, I'm going to write a heading for regular pay. Now for the regular pay, bring this up just a little, we're going to use an if function. So we'll write if the total hours worked here is greater than 40, then this number will be 40. And if not, it will just be whatever value the total number hours worked. We'll close the parentheses, and then that number will multiply by the employee's hourly wage, which is $50. And in this example, that's 2000 Now let's say they didn't work any overtime, so let's change these back to 5 p.m. And let's say on Friday they left at 2 p.m. Then now it just multiplies the total number of hours, which is 37 times $50 per hour. So let's undo that because again, I do want this example to have some overtime. Now to figure out the overtime pay, we'll delete the sum function. Oh, we don't need this. And here we'll use another if function. So we'll say equals if the total number of hours worked is greater than 40, then we want to know how many of those hours are overtime. So we would do total number of hours, minus 40 and if they did not work overtime if the value is false and it was less than 40 hours then this should be zero we close the parentheses and then that value would need to be multiplied by the overtime wage which in this case is 375 so five times 75 and we need to change the total pay to not sum up but to equals the regular pay plus the overtime pay for the week. And actually let's delete these guys up here. Thanks for watching and for more tutorials like this, click on these links. Thanks.